Great morning, Mount Carmel Church family. Great morning, Mount Carmel Church nation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Guess what? I woke up this morning with a praise in my mouth and a worship in my heart just to say, thank you, Lord. Won't you come on and worship the Lord with me and let us exhort, the, exhort his name together. Come on, come on, you know how we do. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Come on, worship with me, worship with me. Lord, if he may not come when you want him to come, but he is an on-time God and he's an online God, yes he is. I thought about something this morning that we were created to worship him. So won't you get 10 seconds, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Won't you get up from where you are and give God the praise, give God the glory, give God his due worship. Come on, come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you, God. God, we worship you, God. We bow down to you, God. We give this worship service unto you, God. Do what you want to do. God, we magnify your holy name, God. God, we worship you, God. God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't even tell it out, but we got this one tongue, and we're going to say hallelujah, God. We're going to shabak you, God. Come on, you got 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hallelujah, God, we thank you, God. God, we love you, God. God, we bow down to you, God. God, we worship your holy name. God, you are exalted above on high, God, and we love you, God. God, and we honor you, God. You got to excuse me this morning. I'm excited to be in worship with you on this online worship experience. Our God is a good God. There is nothing like our Jehovah. There's nothing like Jehovah. There's nothing like our God. There's nobody greater than our God. There's no one greater than him. And we just want to thank you. We just want to magnify your holy name, God. God, we thank you, God. We honor you, God. We worship your holy name. God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to give your name praise, to lift your name on high, to give you worship, God. God, we love you, God. God, with our whole heart, we worship you, God. With our whole mouth, we want to give you praise, God. God, we thank you, God. We lift your name on high. Would you pray with me as we invite God into this holy place, into this online worship experience? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to be on this online worship experience. And for that, God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you give us the ears to hear what you have to say to the church on this morning by your spirit. Father God, give us the hearts to, be, to receive what you have to say, God. God, we thank you, God, for, for your hand being on Reverend Bradford on this morning as she gives us the worship morning sermon this morning, God. And God, we want, we want to say right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you put your hands upon her as she speak your word. Father God, do what you want to do. Have thine own way. This is your holy place. This is your holy tabernacle. Have thine own way. Do what you want to deliver how you want to deliver. Save how you want to save. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Y'all got to excuse me. I'm excited to be on an online worship experience with you. And I'm just excited about God. Our God is so good. God has been so good to us all. And we just got to give him thanks. We got to give him honor. And we got to give him his due worship. Now, Go with me to our scripture. Our scripture is coming from Psalms 141. Psalm 141. And that's going to, we're going to start at the first verse. That's Psalms 141. And I'll begin at the first verse. That's Psalms 141. And I'm going to begin at the first verse. And the word of God speaks, speaks thus. I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you. And lifting up my hands as an evening, evening sacrifice. Set guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch 
over the door of my lips. Do not turn my heart to any evil to busy myself with wicked deeds in the company with those who work iniquity. Do not let me eat all their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me. Let the faithful correct me. Never let the oil of the wicked anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. Amen, amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm excited for our word on this morning. Listen, once again, we'd like to welcome you to our online worship experience. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want you to subscribe to, your, to that YouTube channel right there. I want you to hit that subscription button. Also, I want you to follow us on Facebook so you'll be able to get everything what's going on in our like us on Facebook so you know what's going on in our church, what's, all the, what's happening, all our opportunities that you have to serve here and all the opportunities and also things and ministry events that you will have. Like us on our Facebook and you'll be able to see what's going on here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church. Also, you can follow us on Instagram. Follow us on our Instagram as well, and you'll be able to see what's going on and, and that nature as well here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church. Also, I want to bring to your attention, this month is domestic, domestic Violence Month. I want you to continue to pray for those who are going through a season of domestic violence. I want you to uh, pray for those who are going through that, and uh, I want you to continue to pray for them and also be, a, be an intercessor prayer warrior for those who are going through domestic violence. Amen. Also, I forgot to do this, but I want you to do this. If you have not seen no one here on the side, I want you to love them, share the love through those feeds. I want you to say, hey, great, th great that you are worshiping with us on this morning. I want you to do that right now. Share the love. Just tell them how much you're glad that they're online worshiping with you this morning. And also, if you are a first time visitor, just put that one down and somebody will be here to properly uh, welcome you into our online worship experience. Amen. Amen. Also, if you if you have not, I want you to invite you to come to our Bible study. If you have not joined us on Bible study on our Facebook, please come out to our Facebook live Bible study with Pastor Kimbrough, which starts at 715. Let me say that again. At 715, it starts at 715. Come and be a part of an awesome Bible study. We're studying the book of Exodus. I want you to come out and have a great time on Facebook Live at 715 p.m. on Wednesdays. Amen. Well, it's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. Well, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Casey R. Kimball, and the whole Mount Carmel Church family and church nation, we thank you for your contributions here, here, on, here on at Mount Carmel. We thank you for all your tithes and your offerings. You know, there are different ways in which you can give. You can give by Givelify. That's the app on your phone. You, also, you can mail in your contributions at 7237 Tucker City Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. Also, that will be uh, flashing on your screen as we go through our worship experience. Also, also you can give online. That's MC Baptist Shares. You can give online that way. And another way you can give, you can drive up to the church, and that's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's on Mondays through Thursdays. You can drive up to the church, and somebody will be here to receive your contributions. Or... You can come to our live worship experience we have it at 8 a.m. and the 10.45 a.m. worship experience. And you can give your tithes and your offerings and your contributions that way as well. Well, I think we're ready to give. I think we're ready to give. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to give. And for that, God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. God, we celebrate this offering unto you, God. God, we pray right now as we come as a cheerful giver, God, we pray, God, that this offering and this contribution is used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God, and most of all, for your glory. God, we honor you, God. 
with our tithes, with our offerings, with our contributions. We love you. We worship your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, I enjoyed my time with you. Our music ministry is getting ready to take you to the next level. Listen, I enjoy my time. Worship. Let's worship the Lord together. I enjoy my time with you. Much love to you. Much love. on if you're glad in this place come on let's give him glory i will enter i will enter his gates with thanksgiving in come on i will enter his courts with praise his courts yes sir i will say this is the day that the lord has made Come on, say, say it with me. Come on, he has. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Oh, yes, he has. I will rejoice. Come on, if he's made you glass, come on, sing it with us. He has made. Come on, testify, saints. I will rejoice. Come on, if he's made you glad, give him glory, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings and grace to you in the name of our Lord. We praise God for this opportunity and this blessing to come before you and to share the word of God. I greet you and I pray for you. Please pray with me now. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us that you bring us to this place to worship in your name. And Father, we honor you, we adore you, we glorify you. And today I pray, Lord God, that I would decrease as you increase in this preaching moment. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Again, I greet you in the name of the Lord. And we're reading from Psalm 141. May I read verses 1 through 5 with you? Please pray with me and read with me now. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with those who work iniquity. And let me not eat of their delicacies. Verse number five, let the righteous strike me and shall be kind a kindness. And let me rebuke them, forgive me, and let him rebuke me and it shall be as excellent oil 
Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Thank you for reading with me as we introduce this sermon title, Sis, Your Slip is Hanging. Sis, Your Slip is Hanging. And I'd also like to introduce a subtitle, Embracing Unity and Grace in Our Imperfections. So I believe that while we're here today, we're going to cover a few things in Psalm 141, but this foundational scripture will allow us to place some emphasis on a human dilemma, one that's present in the psalm, and David so eloquently addresses it as he does with his use of music, his poetry, and then he brings in community life. And this title was so intriguing, Sis, Your Slip is Hanging, and I just want to share a, a, a story with you, and it's one that took place here at Mount Carmel. It was a warm summer day, and um, I came in from the outside and was um, in a sundress and had my little jean jacket and went to the restroom and then came back in to worship. And while I was in worship, a kind sister reached over to me and gently embraced me and gave my skirt a nice little tug. And she leaned over as if we were in a sweet, kind embrace. And she says, sis, your slip is hanging. And I was so grateful <laughs> because I don't know if many of you will, if you've ever experienced a wardrobe malfunction, but this gentle reminder was to help me because a slip is what we place under our undergarments as women and it's warm beneath a dress or a skirt, and it prevents the dress from clinging to your body. And the significance of, sis, your slip is hanging, well, it symbolizes today for us, not just that embarrassing moment where I could have, if it were not for the gentle reminder and the embrace from a sister, well, I could have been embarrassed even further, but it also represents a hidden fault or a flaw that needs correction. And so my question for you today, as you're listening, is what does it mean for our slip to be hanging? And how can we recognize it and address it in the context of community. And so I say to you that I believe that there is grace and space within the context of community to address any of our imperfections <laughs> under the theme, the umbrella of unity and also grace. So, as we gather today in this virtual space, and I know you're listening to me by way of your home, some of you may even be driving, but as we gather, let's delve into the profound wisdom of Psalm 141. It's a psalm that beautifully illustrates that human dilemma, the power of music and poetry, and the importance of community life in our journey of faith. Let me start by just introducing what the human dilemma is here. And we read Psalm 1 through 5, but I, I want to just say in part what some of the human dilemmas are that exist here. And one of them is the ability to seek God in our imperfections and to know 
that God is the source of illumination. God is truly the one who gives us guidance when we ask. God is truly the one who shines a light on our path and helps us to see our own faults. And the psalmist so eloquently asked God to not only illuminate, but then to set guard over our mouths. That's verse number three. I want to also illuminate that God not only is the source of our guidance when we ask God to shine light on our path, but God is a refuge. God is a protector. And the psalmist acknowledges God as not only a refuge, but a place of safety and security in times of trouble. And I just love David for the way that he does this because he begins by calling out to God in verse number one, knowing that God is attentive to our prayers. And there's a certain amount of confidence here. And it's a confidence that God listens and answers and responds to our supplications and also our cries for help. And it's a beautiful reminder that there are things that we can learn from God, but we can also learn from each other, especially in the context of community. Sis, your slip is hanging. Embracing unity and grace in our imperfections. And as much as we would like to say the right things all the time and do the right things all the time, well, there is another human dilemma. And that dilemma is the tension that happens in our deeds and our actions. We set out to do one thing and then it, it comes across as another. That's the human dilemma here. And it's that constant, consistent battle between our good intentions and our actions. It's when we slip up on our words. It's when we slip up on our deeds, despite our desire to please God. And when that happens, brothers and sisters, I'm encouraging you to embrace unity and grace, even in our imperfections. Sis, your slip is hanging, and as well-intentioned as I was, to come out of the restroom and to enter into worship with my hands raised, I was vulnerable. And also, I would not have known had it not been for a dear sister who took the time to stop, to pause, to embrace me, and to say, you need a little help. And so I, I want to just share with you that this metaphor about our slips hanging, well, we need time for self-reflection. We need time for humility. You see, it's recognizing that there are times when we make mistakes and that our human dilemma requires humility. And that at times, it requires us to acknowledge our shortcomings and also to see God's help to guard our hearts and our tongues and not to lash out against our brother or our sister when they embrace us, correct us, or even rebuke us. David had something to say about this in verse number five. He said, let the righteous strike me it shall be a kindness, and let them rebuke me, and it shall be as excellent as oil. Let my head not refuse it. David is so eloquent. Now, I want to point out here that his use of music and poetry, well, it is a response to the human dilemma. And, and David, as the author of Psalm 141, he turns to music. He turns to poetry. 
to express his deep longing for God's guidance and he pours his heart out in these poetic verses and he sets his plea to music and to this day we can sit with and walk through and journey through these paths of contemplation that David sets before us. Music is powerful in that way. Poetry is powerful, especially when connecting with God. I cannot tell you how many times my soul has been soothed just sitting and reading through the Word of God, through the poetry, through the stories, and even just sitting with music, how it changes the pulse of the situation, how just breathing through a moment and sitting before God, how it offers a place of solace. And these biblical examples and even my own personal examples, it, it can bring to us a gentle reminder of how music, how poetry, the spoken word, or how it can all enhance our worship and even our prayer life. And so, Mount Carmel family, guests and friends, I'm encouraging you today to incorporate music, incorporate poetry, and even the scriptures into your spiritual journey. And just like David found solace in these artistic expressions, there's some creatives here, and I want you to remember the importance of incorporating music and poetry into our own worship and to our own prayer. And this leads me to this important point about community life and its importance. You see, David discusses and makes reference to the righteous offering reproof. And he says, it shall be like kindness, it shall be excellent, like oil, and that he himself would not Refusing, David acknowledges the importance of community life and he welcomes the reproof and the correction of the righteous, recognizing that we need each other on this journey. And so I want to encourage you and emphasize that the role of the church community is so important, especially when offering support, when offering guidance, and wherever you are in this big old world, you might be listening to us from another nation, even another country. I encourage you to be a part of a, a community. Be a part of a small group. Align yourself with brothers and sisters who, who intend to love you to the fullest wherever you are in your journey and who can encourage you, embrace you, bring you close and say, sis, my brother, may I talk to you. May I encourage you. Break bread with one another. It's important that we need loving correction. We need support from our fellow believers. In our community, we find so much strength to navigate this human dilemma. And studies have shown that in America, that we're facing deficits of connectedness. And there is, described as an epidemic, the state of being lonely. And our human connections and our relationships, well, they're all rooted and grounded in what today I want to offer to you is unity and grace in our perfections. And so I encourage you to, to join in and to be a part of the mutual support and the unity within the church and actively seek opportunities to uplift each other, to guide one another. Well, David, he valued this type of counsel of the righteous. And I say to you that it's a blessing, a grace, and sometimes an overlooked benefit of journeying together 
and being a part of a community. And so in this community, we celebrate Christ. And Christ is the ultimate source of grace and forgiveness. And as we're moving to our close today, I just want you to remember that it's through Christ Jesus that we find forgiveness of our sins and healing for our slips <laughs> and the grace to embrace unity despite our own perfections. And so I want to share with you Ephesians 1 and 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And so today, it's really important to recognize, to address, and to support each other on our spiritual journeys. And I want to encourage you to leave here today with a renewed commitment, a commitment to unity, a commitment to grace, a commitment to mutual support within our church community, just as David exemplified in Psalm 141. And so I want to invite you to look for opportunities to uplift, to guide, to mentor, just as Christ has shown us grace. And so for anyone who's here today, I want to invite you also that if you have not found a loving church home, if you have not found a place that will draw you in, bring you close and surround you with God's love, I invite you to Mount Carmel. I know we're in this virtual space, but I say come just as you are and witness the love of Christ as extended through the body of Christ. And I wanna thank God for you, because if you're here, you're listening, and you're willing and you're ready, well, if you'll pray this prayer with me, then you can accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Please pray with me now, and as we pray, I pray that your hearts would be open. Heavenly Father, you've graced us to speak to one another in love and in unity, embracing your grace today. And perhaps there's a brother or a sister who's listening now and who truly wants to be a part of such a community that will love them through every season of their lives. And so as you commit, and say, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior who leads and guides me. And in Jesus Christ, I have life and being. And if you pray this prayer and you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, well, I say to you, you are saved and saved indeed. And I welcome you to the body of Christ. And Lord, we ask now that as hearts are filled and Lord God, as commitments are being renewed, that Father, you would seal this prayer and this blessing of grace, that you would seal it, Lord God, by the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for this grace. We thank you for every person here who has committed themselves to be vessels of God's love and support in our church family. And we say amen and amen. And I wanna say thank you to everyone who prayed that prayer. We ask that you put your name in the chat. Also let us know that this was the day of my new beginning. And then I also invite you to come, come, come as you are. For those of you who are watching and witnessing as we prepare to close, may I say a special benediction and blessing for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you and make his face to shine upon you and bring you great peace, great joy. Shalom, shalom. Now go out in this big old world and be salt and light. 
Amen. Amen.